Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Johnson. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe to the channel. Trust me, you're gonna wanna stick around for this roller coaster. So here I am, 32 years old, living what looks like the American dream. I've got this big house in the suburbs, a cute seven-year-old named Emily, and a husband, Mark. Oh, and I just landed a promotion at my marketing firm. Sounds perfect, right? Well, buckle up. Sarah, honey, I'm home. Mark's voice echoes through the house as he walks in. I force a smile. Hey, how was your day? Eh, hey, same old, no big sales. He flops onto the couch, his realtor badge still pinned to his shirt. I can't help but notice the worry lines etched on his face. Things haven't been great in the money department lately, but I try to stay positive. Emily's at her friend's place for a play date. Want to order in tonight? Mark nods absently, already flipping through his phone probably checking stocks again. You okay, babe? Mark calls out. Yeah, just... thinking about the twins. There's a moment of silence before Mark responds, his voice oddly strained. Sarah, we've talked about this. It's been seven years. I know he's right, but the pain never really goes away. I was so excited when we found out it was twins, but then... well... We only came home with Emily. I try to push these thoughts away as I tuck Emily into bed later that night. Mommy, can you tell me about the day I was born? She asks sleepily. My heart aches. Sure, sweetie. It was the happiest day of my life. I pause, wondering how much to say. You were so tiny and perfect. And my twin? Emily's innocent question catches me off guard. I swallow hard. They didn't make it, honey. But you know what? I think they gave all their strength to you, to make you extra special. As I turn off the light and close Emily's door, I can't help but feel like I'm missing something. Something big. And I've got a sinking feeling that whatever it is, it's about to turn my perfect life upside down. The silence in our bedroom is deafening as I stare at the pile of overdue bills on the dresser. My hands shake as I pick up a credit card statement the balance making my stomach churn. Mark, we need to talk about this. Now! He walks in, his face a mask of forced nonchalance. About what, babe? Don't babe me. What the hell is this? I thrust the statement at him. Thirty grand in debt? When were you planning on telling me? His face falls, but he quickly recovers. It's just a temporary setback. I've got some big deals in the pipeline. Cut the crap, Mark. I saw your work calendar. You haven't closed a sale in months. Look, I'm handling it, okay? You don't need to worry your pretty little head. Excuse me? My pretty little head is the one keeping this family afloat right now. What have you been doing with all this money? Mark's eyes dart around the room, avoiding mine. Investments. They'll pay off soon, I swear. Investments? Like what? Because it looks an awful lot like gambling to me. His silence is all the confirmation I need. I feel the anger bubbling up inside me. How could you do this to us, to Emily? I'm trying to provide for this family. You have no idea the pressure I'm under. Pressure? You want to talk about pressure? Try carrying twins for nine months and then... Oh, here we go again with the twins. It's been seven years, Sarah. Let it go. The words hit me like a slap. Let it go? That was our child, Mark. Our baby. Yeah, well... At least I got us out of debt once before when I sold one of the twins. The world stops. I can't breathe. I can't think. Did he just say? What? What did you just say? Mark's face goes pale as he realizes what he's done. Sarah, I... I didn't mean... You sold our baby? Tell me you're lying. He slumps onto the bed, head in his hands. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. My mind is reeling. This can't be happening. Start talking now. And so he does. The story spills out of him like poison. The gambling debts. The desperate couple. The corrupt nurse. Dr. Anderson's silence bought with blood money. You were unconscious after the C-section, he says, his voice hollow. They told me there were complications, that one of the babies might not make it. I saw an opportunity. 
an opportunity, an opportunity. That was our child. We were drowning in debt. They were going to take everything. I did what I had to do to save us. I can't believe what I'm hearing. My entire life, my marriage has been a lie. Where is my baby? My voice is barely a whisper. I don't know. The couple, they moved away right after. I never knew their names. Something inside me snaps. Get out! Get out of my house! Sarah, please, we can fix this. Fix this? Fix this? You sold our child. You've been lying to me for seven years. There's no fixing this. I'm sobbing now, my whole body shaking with rage and grief. I want you gone by morning, and I swear to God, Mark, I will find my baby. And when I do, you'll never see either of us again. I will find you, my child, no matter what it takes. The morning after Mark's confession, I'm a wreck. I haven't slept. My eyes are swollen from crying and my mind is racing. I need answers, and I need them now. I pick up my phone and call the one person I know I can trust. Lisa, I need you. Can you come over? Of course, honey. I'll be right there. Thirty minutes later, Lisa's sitting on my couch, her face pale as I recount Mark's confession. Oh my God, Sarah, I can't believe it, that bastard. I need your help, Lisa. You were there that day. Did you notice anything suspicious? Lisa's brow furrows. Now that you mention it, there was a nurse I didn't recognize. She was in and out of your room a lot. We need to talk to Dr. Anderson. He must know something. At the hospital, Dr. Anderson tries to brush us off, but I'm not having it. Cut the crap, doctor. I know you were involved. Start talking. He breaks down, confessing his role. There was a couple desperate for a child. They offered so much money. I'm sorry, Sarah, I was weak. Names. I want names. I don't know their real names. They used aliases, but I remember they mentioned moving to Oakwood Heights. It's not much, but it's a start. As we leave, my phone rings. It's Tom. Sarah, I... I need to tell you something. Can we meet? At a coffee shop, Tom spills his guts. I always suspected something was off. Mark's sudden influx of cash, his nervousness around Emily... I found these in his old files. He slides over a stack of financial records. Back home, I'm poring over the documents when there's a knock at the door. It's Karen, my nosy neighbor. Sarah, I couldn't help but overhear, well, everything. There's something you should know. Seven years ago, I saw Mark talking to a couple I'd never seen before. They were arguing about money and paperwork. I thought it was just a real estate thing, but now... As I dig deeper, a horrifying picture emerges. This wasn't just about Mark and one desperate couple. There's a whole network involved in baby trafficking. Just as I'm about to call it a night, my phone pings, an anonymous text. Your son is at 1456 Maple Drive, Oakwood Heights. Hurry. My heart races. Could this be it? I'm about to turn some lives upside down. With the anonymous tip burning a hole in my pocket, I know I need to play this smart. I call Lisa and Tom. Guys, I need your help for one last push. We're going to nail these bastards. We hatch a plan. I'll confront Mark while wearing a wire, while Lisa and Tom coordinate with the authorities. I meet Mark at a park, my heart pounding beneath the hidden microphone. Mark, I know everything. The trafficking ring, the couple, all of it. You've got one chance to come clean. He panics, spilling details about the operation, the key players, everything. As he talks, I see police cars pulling up. Game over, Mark. The next few hours are a blur of police, lawyers, and tears. But finally, finally I'm face to face with my son. Hi, Michael. I'm... I'm your birth mom. He looks at me, confused but curious. I have two moms? Yeah, buddy, you do. The weeks that follow are hard. There are court appearances, counseling sessions, and lots of difficult conversations. But slowly, we find a way forward. Michael splits his time between homes, getting to know his birth family while maintaining his relationship with the parents who raised him. One night, as I tuck both Emily and Michael into bed, I'm overwhelmed by emotion. Mom, are you crying? 
Emily asks. Happy tears, sweetie, just happy tears. As I close their door, I pause to look at our new family photo. It's not perfect, nothing ever is. But it's real, it's honest, and it's ours. I head downstairs where Lisa and Tom are waiting. We've got a meeting tomorrow with a support group for families affected by trafficking. It's a long road ahead, but I'm ready. Because now, finally, my family is whole. The story of Sarah, Mark, and their twins has come to an end. Now, I have a question for you. If you were in Sarah's position, would you be able to forgive Mark for selling your child, even if he claimed it was to save your family from financial ruin? Or is this an unforgivable betrayal that no explanation could ever justify? Think about the complexity of the situation. On one hand, Mark's actions led to years of lies and separated a child from their biological family. On the other hand, he believed he was protecting his family from financial disaster. Does his intention matter, or are some lines that should never be crossed, regardless of the reason? Consider the impact on all involved, Sarah, Mark, Emily, Michael, and even Michael's adoptive parents. How would you navigate the complicated emotions and relationships in the aftermath of such a revelation? What do you think the long-term consequences should be for someone who participates in child trafficking, even if they are not the ringleader? Should there be any leniency for those who come clean and help bring down larger operations? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective could offer valuable insights into the moral complexities of this situation. If you found this story engaging and want to hear more like it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us continue bringing you thought-provoking content that explores the depths of human experiences and ethical dilemmas. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to hearing your views.